witches. Welcome back to Gothic Magic. We're going to be making the sacred Hecate oil now. It's full of smoke, nice and clean. I also cleanse this one because we're gonna save some of the stuff that we use and we're going to be using it for some incense also. So I won't use everything in the incense, but I'm going to use part of the stuff. So we're gonna start with some of that beautiful cedar that I showed you during the haul. And I'm not gonna grind this stuff up with my mortar and pestle because I like to see the beautiful, just nature floating around in the bottle. It's just beautiful. Get the cedar in. I thought about leaving it whole, but I'm just gonna do it chunky. Okay, and I think I'm gonna even put this stick in there because the wood is also very sacred. Okay, so there's the cedar. And then I'll put some other incense as well. I'm just gonna drop that down in there. I'll kinda come back to that and give it a little bit of love before I put it in the Probably will ground that grind that down some with a mortar and pestle. Next is mullein. Mullein. I always say that wrong. I say so many things wrong, guys. I can't talk at the time. So I'm going to add this into here. And these are all herbs that are sacred to Hecate or related to Hecate in one way or another. And there are many more. Some of them I can't get my hands on. It's really hard to get your hands on them. Um, I do have one store that I go to that he usually has it, but he was not open yesterday. Now, I'm gonna do some Penny Royal Tea. This is not traditionally associated with her, but the reason I'm doing the Penny Royal Tea is because this is, a, this is gonna tie me to her even more because this is one of my favorite herbs. If you've seen any of my hauls, you know why. It's because it's my favorite Nirvana song. Yes, I know that's silly, but the lyrics to the song have a lot to do with why it's one of my favorites. I'm gonna put just a little bit in here because, in the incense because it is poisonous in high doses. Um, you can have a little bit of it for um, indigestion and things like that, but overall, it's not a good idea to ingest. But that's another reason I'm putting it in there is because, you know, she is um, tied to those herbs and those plants that are kind of deadly. You know, she's, those are hers. So that's another reason I put that in there. Okay, now we have the lavender. Oh, that smells so good. I love lavender. So we're going to put the lavender in. This is really going to make this smell good. Incense too, lots of lavender. She loves lavender. Okay. I'm just putting the stuff down here when I finish with it because otherwise I might use it twice. Okay, now I'm going to put some rosebuds. We know she loves roses. And I would also um, sometimes use, the, use this, um, when I make this, use rose water but I did not have time to make rose water. And also, I don't want it to be pink, pink, pink. I want it to be herby looking. So I'm gonna put in seven of these. Actually, I think I'm gonna do 13. One, two, three, four. Whoops, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Almost the perfect amount. Okay, and these are edible rosebuds. I wonder if they taste good. I may leave one, leave a couple on her offering tray tomorrow. Okay, 
um, hibiscus flowers just because it's feminine, it's girly. I left it out of my self-love oil. I really wanted to put it in there. I went, um, I'm gonna go back and add some now that I've opened it. But that's been charging on her altar for a while. I'm just gonna put in three of these. It's kind of hard to count them because they're kind of big, but this is not traditional to put in her oil, but I just feel called to do it. It's feminine, it's flowery, it's pretty. Look how pretty that looks already. It's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna put basil. Um, I'm not gonna put hibiscus and rose um, buds in the incense. I'm gonna put a little bit of basil. Put some basil in her oil. I put, a, I put basil in every oil. I just do just the way that I am. I'm gonna put some white copal. In the incense, only in the incense. Okay. Next we've got the wormwood. And I'm also gonna do a video on some teas that you like witches teas. And this is actually one that you can consume also. Okay. And a lot of these um, that I'm using you can are really good for divina divination too. You can um, consume a cup or light some incense with it or anoint yourself with oil and it will help you um, to sort of see into the future or to, into your present, whatever you choose, whatever you're trying to do. Rosemary, a good amount of that in both. And it's handy to do this when you're doing your oils. If you want to do um, anything related, like you're going to do an incense also. I love to do homemade incense. It's good to do them at the same time. That way you're not having to take everything out twice. If you're like me, you've got, you know, just herbs, flowers, stuff everywhere. So mugwort is next. Mugwort has such an interesting smell. A mugwort going in there. I'm not going to put as much in the incense. Just a little sprinkle there. All right. Some people could put graveyard dirt in their Hecate oil. I'm not going to. I have some, but I'm not going to be putting that in there. There it looks. There it is so far. It's looking beautiful. Okay. And of course, it would not be complete without actual rose petals. I would use some fresh rose petals, but if you use fresh flowers in um, oils, they tend to get rank. So you wanna always, always use dried, okay? You wanna use dried, unless it's an oil that you're just gonna like make and use, use it all of that day. All right. The pile's getting bigger and bigger on the floor. <laughs> okay, next I've got my mint. And this is peppermint. You can use spearmint or peppermint. I like to use peppermint. I love, oh God, it smells so good. One of my favorite herbs. I'm gonna put that in both. That is gonna make a good smelling oil and a good smelling incense. Okay. Now I've got my bay leaves. Bay is good to use in everything. I'm going to plop three leaves down in here. I might just fold them in half to get them in. Crush them, whatever I need to do. Get these guys in here. And Burning Bay, they say, is good for, um, like, any kind of, like, upper respiratory issues you have or if you're sick, to burn bay leaves. 
And of course you can do bay leaf wishes. Wow, that's a big bay leaf. I'm gonna put that one in the incense. <laughs> but the best way to do that is to get them from somewhere fresh because if you get them like this, it's really hard to get one that's whole to write an intention on. Okay, I talked about the importance of orange peel in um, my last haul video. And I really want you to look into that, how it helps you connect to the spiritual realm. So, of course, I'll be putting that in here. Okay, and I'll also do the incense. And I will show you how to burn these incense. Um, I'm not going to burn them all tonight. I'm going to burn them tomorrow mostly. Um, for the ritual that I do before um, I take her offering out, but um, I will show you a little trick to make your incense less whoa when you're doing homemade. Okay, I'm gonna do 13 moonstones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I don't like that one. That one's not pretty. I don't really like that one. So I'm gonna use these 13. Of course, I'm not gonna put any in the incense. That would be silly <laughs> to put them in there. So I'm gonna put them back in their bag. And again, if you're interested where I got all of these tiny moonstones, eBay, eBay. They have really good, um, they have great selection. Now, frankincense and myrrh, it's untraditional to put this in her oil. Again, a lot of these things are, but this is my oil for her. This is not a recipe that I copied from somewhere. Um, this, is, this is her oil that I'm making for her. This represents royal to me, which myrrh, she loves myrrh. I, leave, I always have a big chunk of myrrh on her altar. And, oh, I better put some in the incense. That's important. Um, also the frankincense is associated with royalty and to me she is queen. So why wouldn't I put these things in there would be the question instead of why would I, okay? All right. So now the frankincense. And I will need to grind grind these up to burn incense. Okay, so I can move this now. All right, now, very odd glitter. <laughs> Silver and gold glitter. Yes, glitter. Um, again, royalty, just the colors of royalty silver and gold, which go, which silver is, you know, really highly tied to moon magic anyway, and, you know, with Hecate and the moon, hello, and then gold, because she's a queen, royalty, so, and I don't usually put glitter, I'm not one of those Instagram witches that puts glitter on every single thing, but it is appropriate at times, I do think, to use glitter. Now, next, dandelions. I was lucky enough to find, um, actually, I found six dandelions. I put um, three on her altar, and they shriveled up, and then I dried these three out in the oven. So, I'm going to put these three dandelions in there, just right out of the yard. And then I've got that in there. I'm going to do just a little bit of honey. We know she loves honey. I don't like to put a lot of oil, a lot of honey in my oils because I don't want a sticky oil because I'm going to be anointing the hell out of myself with this oil and candles and I'm going to use this will be gone probably within two more new moons, dark moons, and I will need to make more. So I'm going to put some sage oil. I'm trying to count my drops here, but. Okay, 
I like to put sage oil in all of my oils too because it just adds that extra layer of protection. Now I'm going to put a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit of garlic peel. I'm not going to put any actual garlic because I don't want it to stink and I don't want to mess up her beautiful head of garlic. Um, a lot of people do onion peel too in their incense. I actually meant to pick up an onion today. I will pick it up tomorrow to add to the incense that I actually actually do during her ritual. And during the ritual, um, I will do a very classical prayer, meditation. Um, I might sing. I might, I, I will dance. I will ring my bell. I just rejoice like a crazy person. <laughs> I chose this key out of the pack of keys that I had. Let's see if there's a good way for me to show it to you. I'll put it on up here. You'll be able to see what it looks like. This is the key that I chose. Out of the pack to tie around the bottle when we're finished. I did not say um, Palo Santo the, the key yet. To cleanse this key of all negative energies. So I'm gonna consecrate, consecrate this key to the goddess Akate. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'm gonna put my glitter over here. I need to clean this too before I put it on her altar. I say clean, <laughs> I need to cleanse it. Okay, I'm going to put this olive oil in here. Okay, that's good, maybe a little bit more. And I brought Hang on guys, I'm so sorry. I've left my other high John oil downstairs, but I have another one up here that I want to use. Found some whole bay leaves too. Stepping on paper from my haul. I'm gonna put some high john oil. I'm gonna put 13 drops. Just give it that extra magic. Okay. Now I'm going to shake it. Since I know that this bottle is not gonna last me forever and I will use a new bottle, I'm gonna just shake it with the cork on. I know I say don't do that, but I am. It's so glittery and pretty. I might need to add some more olive oil, guys. I've got a lot of stuff in there. There we go. Okay, and there you have it, my Hakate oil, my recipe. It is beautiful, the, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's got all the flowers and herbs and the glitter floating around. <laughs> it's so beautiful, I love oil. Now I'm gonna ring the bell 13 times. I dedicate this to the goddess Hakate. May you bless me and bless my journey. All right, now I've got the little key and I had a piece of string. I'm so disorganized right now. I have a lot going on right now in 
preparation for tomorrow. It just seems like such a magical night with the dates and the new moon going on. It's got me a little flustered. And they say that this new moon, because of astrological re reasons, um, I'm not that astrological, not really, but um, because of certain astrological reasons, this new moon, these three days leading up to this particular new, new moon, and then, um, <clears throat> why do I keep saying new moon, guys? I'm programmed by idiots. The dark moon, it's gonna give you a lot of emotions, and one of the emotions I've been having is just disorganization and like just completely i don't know what's going on half the time i can't get the string into this key to save my life okay i'm not gonna make you guys wait on me for that i'm gonna have to get a different string but I will put this little key on here and I'll show you what it looks like when we get ready to do incense in just a second. But thank you guys for watching me make this beautiful Hecate oil. Um, you want to leave this on her altar after you make it, dedicate it to her formally. And then what you will do is you will leave it under the full moon. You could leave it under the full moon, but you want to leave it under the dark moon um, try to get it done as soon as possible because the 13th is a magical night. It's tomorrow. I wanted to do this video sooner, but time prohibited me. But guys, thank you for coming to Gothic Magic and blessed be. And I'll be right back with a video about the, how to do the incense. And then you'll get to see the key tied on here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Blessed be.